Hi, I'm James Walsh with New York Magazine, and this is What is Even Happening, a new video series where New York's writers and editors ask experts to uh, help us untangle questions in the news. This week, we're talking to Dr. Peter Hotez, co-director of Texas Children's Hospital's Center for Vaccine Development, about the latest COVID vaccine news and what a vaccine distribution program might ultimately look like. Dr. Hotez, thanks for joining us. Thanks for, it's good talking to you again. Great to talk to you. Uh, it seems as if like every day now brings some sort of vaccine news. So maybe we can just start with the basics. Um, what is uh, the most optimistic timeline for an effective, safe vaccine? Well, first of all, let me just say I'm pretty optimistic. We're going to have several vaccines against COVID-19. The technical bar is not that high. It's an sort of an old school problem in virology, as we've discussed in the past. It's about inducing an immune response to the spike protein, and uh, I think there are lots of ways to do it. Uh, so I think by next year, we'll have several uh, vaccines. What we're seeing uh, in the United States is the program, of course, is called Operation Warp Speed. It's coming in two big waves. The first wave are three vaccines that are moving, that are now in phase three clinical trials. Those are two mRNA vaccines from Moderna and uh, Pfizer and uh, an adenovirus vaccine that's on pause right now, but uh, for, uh, for the uh, AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine. Then you're gonna see others to follow. There's gonna be a live virus vaccine from Merck. You're going to see uh, Novavax. They'll have a recombinant uh, uh, particle-based uh, vaccine uh, and, and a couple of others. So the first wave, the first tranche, is going through phase three now, and hopefully by the end of the year, we should have data in 30,000 person trials for each vaccine to show at least that one of them might be uh, effective at preventing COVID-19 and also is uh, sufficiently safe in order to release to the public. And so those vaccines hopefully next year will start rolling out. We heard from a lot of readers who of course want to take that even further and sort of know uh, once the FDA has approved distribution, what that means is for a timeline for when it will be distributed widely to the general public. Yeah, there's still a bit of a couple of unknowns there. First of all, when you say approve, the, the approval process through the FDA is very robust. That in itself can take six to eight months, even through an expedited process. So a big question is going to be, is that going to be the mechanism that you'll go collect all of that data towards the end of the year and they'll go through that six to eight month approval process? Um, that way we can ensure that all those vaccines are adequately reviewed and tested and, and evaluated uh, and the data evaluated. But there's increasing pressure to release those vaccines sooner to selected populations under what's called an emergency use authorization in the EUA. And uh, the American public has heard about EUAs, things like hydroxychloroquine and others, and, and that's caused some concern among some people because the EUA has been tainted by uh, this uh, administration. I think uh, our, the, the scientific community will be uh, a lot more attentive uh, for vaccines. The problem is we've never released a vaccine uh, through EUA, at least a vaccine uh, to large segments of the general population. It was done once through a technicality uh, for our already approved vaccine, but we've never done an EUA for uh, a major vaccine. So there's still a lot of questions about that. How it will be done, how it will be rolled out, and the FDA is planning on releasing some additional guidance uh, around that concept. So you're probably saying, okay, so what's the answer? Well, the answer is I think you'll start seeing some uh, vaccine released uh, to selected populations uh, by the early part of next year. And then uh, according to the CDC director in his testimony today, by the second or third quarter of 2021, we'll start releasing uh, significant amounts of vaccine to the general population, which is the, the, the numbers that we've been talking about all along for the last year. Um, with the qualification, we have to show that these vaccines actually work and that they're safe, and that's not a guarantee yet, so we have to keep that in mind. Right, right, right. What, what will distribution look like? Uh, you know, uh, am I going to be going to Walgreens? Am I going to be going to Dwayne Reed and having it administered? Um, uh, how do you distribute a vaccine to 300 million people? 
Well, that would be great. Um, unfortunately, for some of these uh, mRNA vaccines, which is a brand new technology, it has to be kept frozen uh, at minus 70 degrees uh, Celsius. And uh, to do that is going to require special facilities. So I don't see those vaccines uh, rolling out at CVS or Walgreens or, or Dwayne Reed or in, here in Texas, we do a, a lot through HEB and Kroger. I, I don't see that uh, happening. Uh, possibly the uh, adenovirus uh, vectored vaccine. So that does add a complication. Some of the uh, later stage vaccines might indeed uh, be, be released through those mechanisms, but you're probably going to have to go through specialty centers and exactly how they're going to set that up and what the logistics are remain to be determined. And remember how this works. By the time uh, these vaccines really start ramping up to the general population, it's going to be after the January 20th inauguration. And, um, and how those vaccines are released may very well likely depend on who's in the White House and their decisions that are made at that level. So too many unknowns to really provide lots of detail. The uh, National Academies of Sciences, uh, Medicine, Engineering, and Sciences have released a, a, a guidance document to recommend tiered populations for that beginning with the usual suspects, uh, uh, healthcare providers, emergency responders, at-risk populations because they'll get more severe illness, older Americans, uh, underrepresented minorities that have been hit hard in this epidemic, but um, still too many unknowns to know how that's going to be followed and how, and, how, uh, and how detailed that will be. What is the biggest risk the administration is running by making this process even appear to be rushed? Well, the big problem has been all along. I think Operation Warp Speed is, is actually running quite well. I mean, the, the clinical trials are well designed. They receive input from our NIH active uh, working group on, on vaccines. So that's, that's good. I think, you know, the science is actually going uh, pretty well, and there's a lot of rigor to it. That's the good news. The not so good news is Operation Warp Speed has not uh, launched any type of communication strategy or plan. Their, their plan, if you want to call it that, is to allow the pharma companies to provide the messaging and the information. And in my opinion, that's not going well. Um, we're, we've seen so many missteps from the, from the CEOs and the boards of the three companies that now have vaccines in, in clinical trials, AstraZeneca, Pfizer, and Moderna have really made some uh, missteps uh, and that's not working. And I'm hoping, and I've been really pushing hard all along this year for Operation Warp Speed to launch a communication plan and strategy by which they speak on a weekly basis to the American people. So far, it hasn't happened. Right, right. And then how have your, your own efforts to develop a vaccine been going? Going well, um, we um, are producing a recombinant protein vaccine that's very similar to the hepatitis B vaccine used all over the world. Um, it's, uh, it's produced through microbial fermentation and yeast, and that's the way we make hepatitis B vaccine. And the reason that's significant is the hepatitis B is a tried and true vaccine that's been around since the 1980s. So it's nice to have sort of an old school technology uh, out there making a safe and affordable uh, vaccine. And the other nice thing about it is hepatitis B vaccine is made in Brazil, it's made in uh, Indonesia, it's made in India uh, and elsewhere, and it's made for a very low cost, oftentimes a dollar, two dollars a dose. So our hope is that it, this will be really the first low cost uh, vaccine uh, for low and middle income countries. And now we've uh, signed an agreement with uh, Biological E. They're one of the big pharmaceutical producers in India to make one billion doses of, of the vaccine. And that's really exciting. We, our, our research group at Texas Children's Hospital and Baylor College of Medicine, our vaccine center, has never made a billion of anything before. So that's right. Really right. Very fulfilling right. and gratifying. And that's right. going through clinical trials and hopefully... Uh, uh, that, that will go well. And, and who knows, maybe it, it'll come back to the U.S. as well at some point. Great, great. Dr. Hojas, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, a man of many bow ties, uh, but thanks for, for, having, uh, for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I uh, really appreciate it. Thanks uh, to New York Magazine.